People say that synthetic nutrients are bad for soil microbes, but are they really? Come on, let's get into some growers myth busting today. But before we do, today's video is brought to you by Real Growers Grow Dots, the easiest way to feed your high value plants. You mix Grow Dots in once at the beginning of your grow and they feed your plants all the way to harvest. You don't have to worry about nutrient burn or nutrient lockout. Grow Dots does all the hard work for you. Check them out over realgrowers.com. And while you're there, use coupon code SCOTTY420 to get 20% off your first order. Now let's get back to the show. Come on, high C. Let's get in a little soil microbe talk, huh? Okay, so you've told me before it's pretty much impossible to grow organic without yes. soil microbes. Yes. But then I've heard talk about soil microbes not mixing very well with synthetic nutrients. So help me understand this. Sure, sure. I don't know how many billions of types of soil microbes there are as far as genus, species, cultivar. Um, but some of them are absolutely required uh, for organic production. When we talk about organic production, you're literally talking about a leaf that has some nutrient in it that gets dropped on the ground, gets broken up by either bugs or uh, bacteria or fungi, and then that is processed in the plant nutrient. So once the bugs process it, then the microbes have to break it down even further. What they're doing is they're mining this nutrient out of it. They're leaving all that carbon, all that extra plant material in your soil. That's why it builds your soil so well. Mm -hmm. and, and then they're taking that little bit of nutrient they've converted it into this ionic form this plant available form and they're delivering that to the root zone so in organic that last part if there's no soil microbes around it's just not going to get the food yeah but in synthetic we don't run into that issue no we figured out 100 150 years ago what the chemical form what that ionic form is and I guess I was going to say, it turns out it's not that hard to make it. It actually was hard. It took us a long time, but uh, they figured out how to make that synthetically. So, and a lot of people will say, oh, synthetics are dirtier than organics. It's probably the opposite. Organics can have anything from the environment taken in. Synthetics, you're cutting, if you're buying a good quality synthetic nutrient coming from clean inputs and you're getting exactly, you know exactly what you're getting, I'll say. And it's immediately plant available. So we don't need the microbes to do that last little bit of breaking it down and making it plain. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then why, first of all, why would I want soil microbes if I'm growing synthetically? And then the other question is, I keep hearing people say you don't want to because it kills the microbes, the synthetics. Sure. There are, like I said, there's all these nutrient solubilizing microbes out there. If you take a compost tea, it's going to have a little bit of a lot of different microbes. And some of those are going to be able to solubilize one type of nutrient. Some are going to be able to solubilize the other. Uh, that's not exactly what, so that's going to make your nutrient available, nutrient cycling, whatever they call it. Mm -hmm. We're we're not going for that when we're doing synthetics. We're actually doing the opposite. We've got tons of available nutrient. And if it touches the, I like to call the roots bare wire. If it, touch, if it touches bare wire, there's going to be a reaction. So what we want to do is we actually want to slow that down. We don't want to, you know, it's very easy with synthetics to burn your plants if you mm -hmm. have too much. Yep. But there's a trick to not having too much to touch the roots but holding a bunch of synthetic nutrient at the root zone at, they call it the rhizosphere is this, I think the definition is a, the 20th of an inch where the roots meet the soil. And the reason it's a 20th of an inch, cause that's where the exchange is happening. That's where that mycorrhizae fuzz is. And that fuzz is the wire coating. That fuzz is the buffer. And it's saying, Hey, I'll let some nutrient in. I'll give you some carbon in exchange because microbes feed on carbon. I thought they fed on sugar. Hey, don't make me Google this, all right? But I'm pretty sure that sugar is like a combination of a hydro, hydro, is a hydrogen and carbon, I think. There's carbon in sugar, all right, man? Okay. <laughs> yes. But the idea is, yeah, they're going to eat that. We talk about the symbiosis, right? So there's that nutrient exchange. A plant gets carbon. The plant brings the nutrients from the soil. Uh, if you have enough microbes there, then you're regulating that root zone. I like to call it the port right there. You, the microbes are regulating that because if there's too much salt, if there's too much fertilizer that comes in, that's going to destroy their whole ecosystem. It's going to mess up the whole game for them. So for organic, yes, there's microbes that go out and grab the nutrients pull them to the plant, make it to where 
the plant can actually absorb them. Can I interrupt you for one second? Yeah. Of course I will. I'm Scott us interrupt us. <laughs> uh, but you've got a bunch of different microbes doing a bunch of different jobs. They all have to solubilize very different nutrients, micros, macros. Okay. And then on synthetic, the microbes, the most active ones are actually kind of adding a buffer there, protecting your plants yes. from too much nutrient. Um, it's a little bit less specific. If I can say, man, you've got mycorrhizae, that's that coating. It's coating the roots. Whatever shows up there can either get in and out, has to exchange. You've got bacteria. Bacteria. I always think of my teeth when I wake up in the morning, but they might be, they're, they're sticky. There's things that will stick to the, the uh, bacteria, man. So putting a bunch of bacteria in your soil, they're just sticky. So when you pour your nutrients or your nutrients release, uh, these are salt-based nutrients. The ionic nutrients, they call them salt-based, just means a metal and a non-metal combined. Mm -hmm. There is no, uh, the organics will stick They've got that giant molecule. It'll stick into the soil with the synthetics and the salt base. No, it won't. So that's why they talk to you about ah. leaching out. You can just wash out the nutrient in your soil. I don't want that, man. I want to keep the nutrient in my soil. I don't want to keep it washed out. So having those sticky bacteria help keep it in the yep. soil. Yep. Okay, you mentioned salt-based. Yes, and sir. one thing that I do know if I'm just pouring salt-based nutrients on versus having an organic, in-tuned growing environment, adding those salt bases will mess with the pH of my soil, of my water. Yes, How absolutely. about microbes role in that? Microbes are alive and they are able to change their pH. They are, are able to regulate their pH. So that's why I talk about it. It's a little bit of an oversimplification. pH definitely matters. If your pH is within range, the microbes are able to regulate their own pH and they're able to take, don't forget, they want to make that transaction. They need, the microbes can't make carbon. They need that from the plant. So it's an exchange thing where the plant makes carbon up in the leaves, sends it down, and that's what the microbes can feed on. So the microbes, of course, want to make that deal happen by grabbing onto some of that nutrient and trading it. Okay, I'm a little, little bit confused here. Yes, sir. I thought the carbon was made to build the plant. You're saying the carbon is also made inside the plant to feed the microbes? Hey, yeah, you got to feed the microbes, man, all right? Most of it goes to the plant, eh? Yeah, no, mo most of that energy goes to the plant. The plant knows this, okay? The plant knows that it has to uh, facilitate the exchange, the nutrient exchange happening in the roots. And they didn't know this. Re this is kind of like recent stuff they're figuring out. But the plant uses most of its energy up here in the leaves. I think they said it's like 10 to 15%. It sends down. It sends down as carbon or sugar for the microbes to eat. Those might, that's where that exchange happens. And that's where the, I'm, I'm humanizing, I'm anthropomorphizing it too much, man. I get, I get the points for that word. <laughs> but they're making this exchange at the port is what I like to say. The plant, the microbes have the nutrients stuck to them. They want some carbon for food. They go and then that mycorrhizae fungal coating is just a friendly space to do it in. And that's how these microbes work. They work with synthetic nutrients. Okay, so I'm growing synthetic nutrients, yes. maybe in rock wool, maybe in cocoa. Deal. You've told me nature abhors a vacuum. That's another big word, abhor. I learned that in ninth grade. Nature fills a vacuum. How about that? You cut your finger, you wash it off, right? You come back that evening, and if you didn't keep it sterile, guess what? You got bacteria growing in there. Within an hour, you got bacteria in there. You brush your teeth every 12 hours, right? Every morning you wake up, you got bacteria back on there. Nature fills a vacuum. Yes. So, so if I'm not in control of it, what I'm thinking is I'm going to have soil microbes make their way in anyway. Whether you like it or not, you want to be the good guys or the bad guys. I like to say you set up the no vacancy sign. Even some of these, they call them commensal. They just don't do anything. I have friends that are commensal. They just <laughs> take up space, okay? But yeah, they are taking up space. So when a pathogen comes in, I'm having a party. 90% of the guys there, or the, the people there are commensals. When the bad folks show up, the troublemakers show up to trash my house, there ain't no room, man. Okay. It's a boring party, though, but come on. <laughs> so it sounds like that would also probably help prevent things like root rot. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, root rot 
is pathogens getting to your root. It's that bare wire. There's If there's mycorrhizae there, which is a myco, fungus, rhizae, root, it's a fungus that grows all over that root. Guess what happens when the pathogen tries to bite into that root or attach to it? Gets a big bite of mycorrhizae, big bite of fungus. Hey, that's not what I'm looking for. Let's go somewhere else, man. Okay, so all of this seems like compelling reasons why even if I was growing with synthetics, I should still be using some sort of soil microbes. I don't care if you use my microbes or not. Shout out Real Growers Recharge. It was a game changer. When somebody taught me finally about soil microbes, it was an absolute game changer. So much that when I wanted to get into this industry, the best thing I could think to start with was a soil microbe blend. What is it in marketing? This is so good, I got to tell somebody, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? So then let's go back to the very beginning of today's video where I asked, because I have heard people say, yes. synthetic nutrients kill soil microbes. Where does that come from? Is there any legitimacy to that? Yeah, because compost tea, if you're brewing a compost tea that is complex and fragile, a lot of nutrient, I'm sorry, a lot of uh, different bacteria in there, maybe not crazy amounts of one or the other, but a real diverse amount of bacteria or diverse consortium of bacteria and you throw that on some salt-based nutrients or something a bunch you know high ec or high ppm salt-based nutrients most of those microbes are not adapted for that you just brewed those and you know on a compost brewer what we're talking about when with whether it's recharge or a commercial uh, micro blend we're talking about finding the microbes that are able to exist in these high pressure conditions, you know, these high fertilizer uh, conditions. So yes, synthetic nutrients can be harmful to soil microbes, definitely. But Certain soil microbes. Yes, it depends on the selection. It, de it depends on what soil microbes, and that's why you do have to choose them carefully. Putting compost tea, a really good compost tea, on your plants indoors with salt-based fertilizer is not going to do nearly as good as putting a micro package that is designed for it like recharge okay today's episode definitely felt like a science we used a lot of big words today did we i thought at least three i counted all right, man. Anthropomorphize doesn't count because it had nothing to do with microbes, damn it. <laughs> hey, but that's just my opinion. What about you? What do you think? Come on, let me know in the comments. And if you dug this video, please hit that like button. Smash that subscribe button. Talk about this one with another grower you know. And check out the other couple of videos YouTube is recommending. Hi, C is sure you're going to like them.